Welcome to Confessing the Faith, a theological and devotional walk through the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith. I am your host, Sam Waldron, pastor of Grace Reformed Baptist Church in Owensboro, Kentucky, and president of Covenant Baptist Theological Seminary. In this episode, we continue to consider chapter 15 of the Confession, which takes up the important subject of repentance unto life. Paragraph 3 provides a wonderful definition of repentance, which can be illustrated by means of the analogy of a tree with soil, roots, trunk and branches, and finally, fruit. Today, we want to consider the roots of this tree of repentance. The function of roots are to nourish the tree. True repentance grows out of two great convictions, roots, in the soul. These two realities are called, one, a true sense of his sin, and two, an apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ in the Shorter Catechism. A true sense of his sin. What does this mean? The Confession speaks of being made sensible of the manifold evils of his sin. This is not a bare intellectual assent or admission. Just a sense of the danger of our sins. No, it is a sense of defilement and guilt in general for our sins. It is an experience of the defilement and guilt of one's own sins before God. Psalm 130, out of the depths I have cried unto you. And the language, if you should mark iniquities, who could stand? Or this is the cry that we hear in Luke 15, 19 of the prodigal son. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And this was the a sense of the Israelites who were brought to repentance in Acts 2. They were cut to the heart. And we only need to read Psalm 51 and David's repentance there to see the sense of defilement and guilt that is one of the roots of true repentance. But then the Shorter Catechism also speaks of an apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ. Many have come to some personal experience of the guilt, defilement, and danger of their sins who know nothing, finally, of true repentance. The classic example is, of course, Judas Iscariot in Matthew 27, 3-5. Judas had a sense of his sin, but he lacked the second vital root of true repentance, apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ. To what does this refer? It is the confidence or conviction that if I repent and go back to God, he will receive and forgive me. This was, of course, implicit in the prodigal son's resolve. Even more clearly, the psalmist asserts, there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Psalm 130 verse 4. How do we know that this is a root of true repentance? Because one, repentance is inseparable from faith. Mark 1.15, apprehension of mercy in Christ is faith. Two, God's offers of mercy accompany his calls to repentance. He offers forgiveness to all who repent. And so uh, repentance must involve responding to this offer of mercy. See Joel 2.12 and 13, Jeremiah 3.22, Isaiah 55.7. And then third, we know this because true repentance involves turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 9.35, And all who lived at Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. They didn't simply turn from their sins. They turned to the Lord. The same thing is said in Acts 11.21. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. What are the applications to us of this consideration of the roots of repentance. Well, first we have to address the question to all, have you seen your sin for what it really is? Do you know experientially something of the defilement, ill desert, and guilt of your own sins? And then we must say this as well, beware remorse for sins that doesn't lead you to Christ. Beware remorse for sins unaccompanied by an apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ. A feeling of ill-desert and misery is one root of true repentance, but it is not by itself repentance. And then this application, beware of suppressing a feeling of your own defilement. 
suppressing it in your soul, refusing to think about it. Such a sense of sin is not your enemy, but it is your friend intended to drive you to Christ. 